This video includes a paid sponsorship from NordVPN, but I'll talk more about that later. It looks like Tesla is working on a new wet dry multi-layer hybrid electrode manufacturing process that could potentially be in their third generation 4680 battery cells and could lead to improved capacity retention, increased power density, and improved charging performance. Stick around as I discuss this new hybrid electrode manufacturing process and its potential benefits as described in this recent Tesla patent application. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. The first generation 4680 batteries from Tesla were quite a bit of a disappointment, especially when it comes to charging performance and energy density, and only incorporated Tesla's dry battery electrode manufacturing process on the anode side of the battery and not the cathode side. However, the Tesla Cybertruck will use Tesla's new second generation cyber cells, which should be 10% more energy dense than the first generation of 4680 battery cells and hopefully will have better charging performance as well as I will discuss later on in the video. Despite this energy density increase though, we still don't know if Tesla has uh, started incorporating dry electrode manufacturing processes on the cathode side. But nonetheless, since Tesla has been very quiet on this, I'm assuming that these cyber cells, these second generation 4680 batteries, still use a wet process for manufacturing the cathode side of the battery. Now, as I move into this topic, I think it's important once again that I just quickly step back and talk about the difference between wet electrode manufacturing and Tesla's dry process. Manufacturing the cathode and anode of a lithium ion battery is generally done with a wet process that involves mixing the active electrode powders together with solvents to form a slurry, which is then used to coat the electrode foil. The coated foil then goes through an oven and when dry, goes through a calendaring process to further compress the active material onto the foil. The machines necessary for this wet process, especially ovens, take up a lot of space on the factory floor. And in addition, it takes extra time to do all these processes and to dry these electrodes. However, with Tesla's much improved dry battery electrode manufacturing process, which is an adapted technology from Maxwell Technologies who they acquired. This dry process requires no solvents or drying ovens, and instead the active electrode powders are mixed with a binder and pressed directly onto the electrode foil. According to Tesla, as compared to the traditional wet electrode manufacturing process, this dry process requires 10 times less energy and 10 times less space. So when fully implemented, this dry battery electrode manufacturing process is a game changer. However, Tesla has had some struggles fully implementing this dry process, and there have been problems not only on the manufacturing side, which I've discussed in the past, but as was revealed in this Tesla patent application that I discussed in a past video, which I will link to down below, this PTFE binder may start to decompose, which can lead to reduced battery capacity, higher resistance, which means more heat, and potentially complete cell failure. While that past Tesla patent application did give a solution to the problem um, associated with the uh, dry battery electrode process and the PTFE binder breaking down, Tesla appears to be working on another solution with a new multi-layer hybrid electrode manufacturing process that incorporates a wet processed layer and a dry processed layer to improve battery performance. However, before I dive into the details of this new process, this portion of today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. Whether you like it or not, your online activity is constantly being tracked by many of the websites that you visit and your location is not private when browsing. However, when you connect to the internet through NordVPN, your location is masked and your data is encrypted so you can avoid being tracked while browsing online, whether you are at home or connected to a public Wi-Fi connection. Now do be aware though, all VPN services are not created equal and can slow down your connection speeds. However, NordVPN is nearly twice as fast as the next VPN provider, so you can browse safely without sacrificing speed. And since they have 
5,900 plus servers in 60 countries, you can experience a fast VPN experience pretty much wherever you are, and they allow you to connect up to six devices at one time. Check out everything that NordVPN has to offer by going to nordvpn.com forward slash cleanerwatt. And if you sign up for a two year plan, you'll get four months free and a huge discount. Also, don't worry, it's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Okay, now moving back to the details of this new Tesla patent application, I did a little bit of research and found that this is really a revisiting of an exact technology that Maxwell Technologies developed previously. Tesla acquired Maxwell Technologies in the past and they recently applied for this patent application with the same title as the previous Maxwell Technologies patent application. And here's how this technology is described. In some embodiments, the multi-layer hybrid electrode film comprises at least one dry cast electrode film and at least one wet cast electrode film. Now it is clear to note here that when we talk about a hybrid with a wet and dry, we're not talking about having a wet process cathode and a dry process anode. We're actually talking about a um, wet and dry process on a single electrode. So a multi-layer, for instance, anode incorporating both wet and dry layers. And this patent application does describe variations of this design. For example, it describes a multi-layer electrode film where the wet and dry electrode films are in direct contact with each other. And then it also describes a design where you have the wet and dry layers that are separated by a third layer, which can be made up of a composite powder, a composite powder paste, a composite film, and or an adhesive paste. With that being said, what are the benefits of this new potential multi-layer hybrid technology? Well, it's described here that this particular technology leads to, quote, a reduced rise in equivalent series resistance, and also, quote, can allow the device to have an increased power density. My understanding of this is when you have lower equivalent series resistance and you have higher power density, that leads to faster charging performance. Basically, when you have higher power density, that means that you also have not only a high discharge power rate, but you have a high charge rate. And when you have reduced resistance during charging, that means the battery creates less heat, which is one of the limiting factors that holds back a battery from charging very fast. If that battery creates a lot of heat, uh, heat can destroy a battery. So the BMS system has to make sure and throttle down the power when it comes to charging if there's too much heat. So if you're able to have a lower resistance here, this allows you to charge a little bit faster. There are of course other limiting factors um, like the anode materials itself and how that's put together. But nonetheless, this is interesting and could lead to faster charging performance with this technology. Now, interestingly enough, in that past Tesla patent application that I previously mentioned, talking about the problem with a PTFE binder degradation, um, increased resistance was a thing that was related to this breakdown of the PTFE binder. I believe this potential for increased resistance could be one of the reasons why the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y that's equipped with Tesla's first generation 4680 battery cells charges so slowly. For example, according to evdatabase.org, the long range all wheel drive Model Y equipped with 2170 batteries is able to go from a 10% to 80% state of charge in just 27 minutes. However, on the flip side, Brandon Flash, who published a YouTube video in the summer of this year, tested the charging performance of his standard range all wheel drive Model Y, and it took 41 minutes for that vehicle to go from a 10% to 80% state of charge. And when you look at the miles being added per minute of charging, that is very slow as compared to the 2170 equipped Model Y. Now beyond this multi-layer dry, wet, hybrid electrode manufacturing process that I'm describing, Tesla's second generation 4680 battery cells or their cyber cells could actually charge faster than the first generation 4680 battery cells, even without this hybrid multi-layer electrode design. At Ghostin Skater on X.com recently posted a great thread with a theory as to why Tesla's generation one 4680 batteries charge so slowly. And it seemed to be partially due to the copper flower shaped plate that was attached to the anode current collectors. 
As Ghost and Skater points out, and as I have previously discussed in past videos, Tesla's new second generation battery cell design no longer includes this copper flower shaped plate and instead the tabless shingles appear to be welded directly to the lid of the battery which not only leads to a more energy dense battery cell but apparently will allow for better thermal performance and thus faster charging. Since this is the cell design that should be used in Tesla's new cyber cells, the charging performance of the Tesla Cybertruck should be much better than the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y that was equipped with first generation 4680 battery cells. However, it looks like this new technology from Tesla, this uh, multi-layer hybrid wet dry process, very well once again could lead to even better charging performance on top of um, this new design with the cyber cell. In addition to those benefits from this multi-layer hybrid technology, this patent application also describes the benefit of, quote, a reduced loss of capacity over the life of the device. So lower resistance and higher power density lead to faster charging and better performance of the battery cell. And apparently these battery cells will be able to maintain more capacity longer with this new technology. So these are some pretty big benefits from this technology. However, do note that this new hybrid approach may signal that the dry process alone still needs a bit more development to meet the desired performance and life cycle demands that Tesla wants to get from their batteries. While I wish this new hybrid manufacturing process was not necessary because once again, the dry electrode manufacturing process is so much more efficient, this hybrid process could serve as a good in-between for now while Tesla continues to develop out their dry process. So my thinking is it's very possible that Tesla's third generation of 4680 battery cells could incorporate this new multi-layer hybrid wet dry electrode manufacturing process. And then maybe with Tesla's fourth generation of battery cell, they will fully incorporate 100% dry electrode manufacturing processes. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Remember to check out everything that NordVPN has to offer by going to nordvpn.com forward slash cleanerwatt. And if you sign up for a two year plan, you'll get four months free and a huge discount. I will put this link in the video description below. I also wanna say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.